guys, and welcome to the Fashion Dialogue with Fashion Retail Academy. Um, you guys are style sheets, so do you want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, so I'm Lexi, um, and I'm Natalie. <laughs> Thank you for having us in your amazing office today. Um, so I think let's start with where um, it began, and where did you guys grow up? Yeah, so we're um, Hertfordshire based, um, both grew up in a little village called Chipperfield. Um, our dad was always in the fashion industry. Um, he had a supplier that kind of supplied to the high street, so the likes of Topshop, lots of the Arcadia group, um, and then also places like Coast, Karen Millen. Um, so we've kind of grown up in the industry, haven't we? We've yeah. um, kind of, yeah, lived it our whole life. Um, and then I started working for the family business and was an account manager to some of the clients. Um, Nat, your background is originally? Yeah, so originally I was in recruitment and I've always kind of had like quite a sales head and just been very like driven and focused. Um, and I think we both said, you know, there's more that we can do yeah. and we should do, you know, something for ourselves and, you know, you guys were always like building the product for other people and we were like, we want to do it yeah, for ourselves. Let's just do yeah. it for ourselves. So. I think we had so much like experience in the industry and we kind of had all the foundations set out that we were just like, right, let's actually launch Style Chi. Yeah, so was it a discussion that had been going on for a number of years yes. or months yeah. or days? Yeah, we'd sort spoken of. about it a lot, hadn't we'd we? We'd tried to do it before yeah. as well, hadn't we? So yeah. I, I think it was 2013 I did The Apprentice and that was my idea was to do a fashion business. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when I came out of that, we tried to do it, didn't we? Yeah. But we got it wrong. We got it wrong. It failed, it failed, it failed first time. We learned so much from that, didn't we? Yeah. We can touch on that yeah. later. Yeah. 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 But you, so you, it was founded in May 2019. So yes. Actually. So, um, so what gave you the idea for Sarchi, and what gave you the push to get it off the ground? So. I think we, well, actually, what gave us the push is that a lot of the high street retailers were going into administration. Um, so gossip was kind of struggling in that way and we just thought right if we don't do it now we're never going to do it and I truly believe there will never be a right time to like set something up yeah. so we kind of just like both pushed ourselves didn't we and was like yeah. right if we're going to do it and some people would just be like oh no is it the right time everything's happening in the industry others were like no you should do it and I think we both just thought no like let's just, just do yeah. it it's the yeah the time is now yeah. Yeah. so you were already working for gossip yes yeah and you were working well I was actually in retail recruitment at the time oh. yeah so I left that um, and then we just started and it was we casually started didn't yeah we? you were yeah. still doing your job yeah and we just started building a range um, building a website um, yeah. getting the domain name yeah. um, all those little bits getting it registered um, yeah all the email addresses, kind of all the background, and then, done, yeah, yeah well. all the background was done, and then we had our first collection, didn't we? Yeah. Um, and then we got on, it was Silk Fred. Yeah, Silk Fred first. We got on Silk Fred, which is like a marketplace, mm -hmm. um, so that kind of got our name out there, mm -hmm. um, and then that was slowly driving traffic to our own website. Yeah. Um, and then we started, we were like, right, <clears throat> how do we get bigger? So we've got all this now, we've yeah. got our range, what do we do now, how do we sell the clothes? Yeah. So they were kind of ticking along nicely, but it just wasn't, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> yeah, it was ticking along nicely, but it just wasn't big enough. So we were like, we're gonna work with influencers, didn't we? Yeah. Um, so we contacted some PR companies and started working with influencers, influencers, sorry. Some worked, some didn't. Um, and so we quickly learned that, you know, you do have to kind of try these people, yeah. understand your audience and everything. Yeah. So going back to the when you first started to, to get it off the ground, you say it didn't work. What yeah. what happened? Like why didn't it work? Oh, in 2014. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we, I don't think we were as focused as much on it. I don't think we believed in it as much. Yeah. And I think we. I think there were things on the website that we didn't feel right. I feel like the model was the model yeah. that we originally used wasn't quite right. I don't think the clothes were as good as we wanted them to be. Um, I just think it was yeah, there were quite a it few. It was also we started with a very small collection. Yeah. Our idea was a going out dress that you could get one, you know, it was a different style for every type of body shape. Yeah. And so there was one option really for every type right. of body shape. So there were like 12 yeah. options, weren't there? It just wasn't it. No. And I think because didn't we didn't create. believe in it as much yeah. then, it didn't work. No. Yeah. I think you really have to 
strongly Put believe in something. Yeah. So and you have to wear, it, and yeah. everyone's got to want to wear that. Yeah. You know, that's how we, we, not with some brands, I suppose, if you don't do a you know, brand like that, but for the brand that we wanted to create, we were so passionate about, yeah. we wanted to wear those clothes. Yeah. So what do our want friends want to wear? Yeah. We want to feel good in them. We want them to make us feel good. And I think once you've got that, and you really understand what your output is, you yeah. know, you, then you know it it doesn't fail. Yeah. Because you, you've got yeah. it right. So you know your first collection that you did for Style G, or even your collections now. Do you are they clothes that you personally love and want to wear? Do you test it with your friends? Yeah. And yeah. Do you like this? You know, would you wear? It? Do you put anything out that potentially that you have like really don't like? No, I think we don't all have to yeah, like it. We all have to like it. And if we don't necessarily feel like, okay, well, that might not be something I would wear, we will know someone that will be like, well, my friend Olivia would wear that. Yeah. Like, so we always make sure we know who that customer is for that specific yeah. product. Yeah. Because I think there's so many different body types, um, so many different attitudes. Yeah. And I think it's hard, obviously, catering for everyone, but I feel like we've really got us, we know who our audience is and we know who she is and I think as long as you really design for that person mm -hmm. you can't really go wrong. So who is your um, target audience? Who is your style cheat girl? We we kind of think of her as a you know she's confident, she likes looking nice but she maybe sometimes struggles a little bit with kind of putting things together. I think she's busy, she might be a mum, she might have like a full-time career and she just doesn't she doesn't really have the time to like troll through websites and she yeah. wants us to make it easy for her. So whether it's like putting on a smock dress with a jacket, denim jacket, leather jacket, if they have trainers or it's just effortless yeah. for her, but she still leaves the house feeling really confident and yeah. really nice and pretty and just, yeah, yeah And it makes her feel good. Yeah. yeah. And like, yeah, she's not maybe the trendsetter. No. You know, she won't know that she needs to be told. Yeah. Um, and so that was kind of our aim. We need to show her how yeah. she wears yeah. it, how to put it together and make her feel good. When she's even, you know, she's dropping the kids off at school, she's going to her friend for a coffee, yeah. you know, she's going to feel good. Yeah. So I think we spoke a little bit about this off camera, about knowing your target audience. Yes. Um, so do you want to talk about how important that is and sort of how you found who that you yeah. start choosing? Yeah. I think, yeah, I think when we started, we um, kind of went for maybe a little bit younger, yeah. I think, when we first started, um, and that could have been in the silhouettes, maybe it was kind of like shorter dresses or kind of, you know, crop tops and yeah. stuff like that, and I think we slowly realised that not everyone wants to get their stomach out, not everyone wants to wear a really short dress, you know, people are a bit, you know, self um, conscious. conscious about the way they look, maybe, and it's like, that's fine, but then just, you know, work with kind of what you've got in a way, like, put on a dress, feel good. Yeah, and I think we realised, like, our bestseller yeah. in our first collection is continues to be our bestseller. So we were like, what does she love about that dress? Yes. You know, it was the style, she loved the frill, she loved, and it wasn't a sexy, sexy dress. So we were like, it, it was, was our Ariana. It was our Ariana, Ariana satin dress. Satin yeah. dress. So it's a halter neck, she likes the halter neck. So you take all those aspects, well, she likes that. Why doesn't she like, you know, the other mm -hmm. things? Well, it's because it's a bit too revealing. Yeah. That's not our girl, our girl that's buying into this brand. So then you kind of really build on that and you're like, let's yeah. give her more of that. And um, yeah. yeah, so yeah. Because from collection to collection, we'll talk about this next, about you know, how you keep up to date with trends. But and like you're saying, it's not all about reinventing, it's about reinventing, you know, the styles that work yeah. previously rather than always coming up with absolutely kind of new ones. Yeah. yeah, moving yeah. them on. Yeah. That's always yeah. what we say, like, like Nat saying, yeah. you know, why does she like that? Well, what should we take from that yeah. and put it to something new? Because she doesn't always need the next new thing. No. Yeah. She just wants to put something on and feel nice, yeah. feel confident. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, you absolutely. Can't go with staple pieces. No, no, and that's the thing. Season, season. Yeah, and so we might change the colour or the print, but the shape will be the same. Yeah. And she likes that, you know. Oh, if yeah. she if she buys one dress, she'll get and, and it fits her well. She'll wear it in all the different colours. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's a loyal customer. Yeah. Um, and but we do we like ten percent. I'd say it's testing. Yeah. Because she'll surprise us sometimes. Yeah. So you know, you always have to be testing and to kind of keep ahead and everything. Yeah. So did you face any struggles when you um, started up the brand? Was there anything that surprised you or shocked you? Um, did you have to make any sacrifices? Oh, I'm sure we've made loads. I mean, I'm always at the view to kind of make more, like if we believe in something, let's just back it. Because 
one thing that we realised is, you know, you can have something that you think is going to be a bit ahead if you truly believe it, but then if you don't back it with the styles, yeah. it's going to take, you're going to sell out, then you've got six weeks to get back into it, and that is six weeks of sales you have lost off yeah. your bestseller. Like, so there is an element of risk there, and we haven't, now, we'll, we'll take m many more risks now, won't we? Now we understand, and now we've got a better idea. Yeah. But yes, in the early stages, we were kind of not taking as many risks and we were kind of selling out of stuff. Yeah. We were, another mistake we made is paying for influencers that just weren't our target audience. Yeah, and spending a lot of money on that yeah. because they're expensive. Yeah. Um, and not really knowing how to, I guess, negotiate that. And you, yeah. you're, you're not really, if you don't understand how the industry works, you yeah. just... It can be really daunting yeah. speaking to yeah, different influencers in the age of them. Yeah, well, influencers now is, it's quite a new thing really yeah. in the last couple of years that brands are using influencers now more than they ever would. And even back in 2014 when you started yeah. your other brand, they were, it wasn't even a thing no. really back then. And I think it's really hard for us because we feel so passionate about our brand, having yeah. to pay someone to be, we didn't want it to be fake. Yeah. Yeah. So every time we're like, well, she, she's got to love the item. Yeah. She's got to talk about it authentically because we don't, you know, the, the you know, the public are not silly. They can tell whether they someone's buy, trying to yes, sell something. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. 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 So that's been hard for us to kind of. Yeah. And I think that's taken us a long time. And I think it's taken us a long time because we want to get it right. Yeah. Yeah. We don't just want to throw money at different people that don't believe in the brand. We want to get kind of like that that kind of like cult of people yeah. that really truly love style cheat, that yeah. want to wear style cheat and tell all their friends about it. And yeah. I think that's what we, why it's maybe taken a little bit longer yeah. to find the right people. And we've realised as well, like our customer very much, you know, when she, you know, she loves us and she buys into us and you can see like on our Facebook come posts and everything, they're just gunning for us and like, like yeah. really like buying into us mm. and you know that they're telling all their friends about us. And yeah. so in a way that's more of our influence. Yeah. 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 So obviously in the last year we've had the pandemic, um, as a brand how did that affect you and how did you um, adapt to change? I think you have to adapt like really quickly and I think when, when it hit, when Covid hit, we kind of noticed everyone was staying in yeah. and we weren't always a brand that had a lot of loungewear or tracksuits or kind of that sort of ilk of product. And I think we straight away were like, right, this is what we need. Yeah. We need some new knitwear, we need some loungewear. And I think that is what you have to do. You just have to adapt really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Did you act quickly when that happened? Yeah. We did. did go into we still yeah. had to make it our brand, didn't we? Yeah. Like we still were quite strict on that. We wanted it to fit in with yeah. when you get stuff at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we had to react quickly. Don't just sell a tracksuit that's not a no, cheap tracksuit. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. 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 So you had to have some thought and yeah, yeah absolutely like behind it yeah. Yeah. yeah it was yeah very fast so there's gonna be a lot of people watching this including our students that want to start up their own brand um, but don't really know how to get it off the ground what advice would you give to them um, and maybe advice that you wish you had when you started yeah i think the best bit of advice is just work at it like you have just got to put everything into it like it's going to be early mornings late nights like you're going to have to constantly, it's gonna be on your mind 24 seven. Mm. Like you're not gonna switch off, like we have it, don't we? Yeah. Even now, and we, yeah. we have it, had it in the beginning as well, where it's like, you'll go out for dinner, you'll talk about it. Yeah. You'll call each other on the way home in the car, yeah. you'll just be with each other, you're still talking yeah. about it. Like there's so great. many, dis you, yeah, live you live it. it consumes your life. I'll be trying to like have a conversation with my children, I'll be trying to yeah. talk to me and I'm just like, thinking about work because yeah. and it's, it's like that it just consumes you yeah so it? i think if you're not if you're, if not, you're not ready for that, for that yeah. don't do it ready because for the hours and the time yeah. that you've got to test yeah it. yeah so two years in and you're already um, on asos you're on silk Fred, yeah so you're doing amazingly so the future is yeah. you know like and we're due to be on next in june yeah. july we launched with next yeah. as well and we're in the middle east now we're yeah, in their Debenham stores in the yeah, Middle East, so Dubai, the Dubai Mall, which has been really cool to see as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been running for two years now, so what is your biggest achievement today and why? That's a hard one. Isn't well, it? I definitely think um, the billboards, when we got yeah, the billboards yeah, outside Westfield, yeah. that was amazing. Yeah, um, that was incredible. That was like a pinch me moment, you were saying. Yeah, it's like something you always dream of, like, yeah. don't you, like, as a yeah. like, see something that you've worked hard on like on a billboard yeah. like it's a bit of a thing and it's like yeah. actually happened and it was just yeah and that was with our first connection yeah wasn't it yeah so yeah, yeah that was pretty cool um what are the other things oh i think um the way the way we reacted and adapt adapted to the pandemic yeah i think we 
we were in a situation I think where yeah things were ticking along nicely but when we decided to react quickly with the masks mm -hmm. and started making the masks the way that that took off and that was because we were so reactive yeah. and because we had the capabilities yeah. to be able to back something yeah. um, and, and that's just given us yeah a whole year I suppose of being able to sell the mask and again still keep those on brand yeah. not just selling a mask selling a great quality one that was you know that was with the prints of the brand and yeah that people bought into has just given us that insight. Yeah. So obviously you're going to be expanding, you're looking for new roles, uh, but what do you look for in a style sheet candidate? Yeah I think they've definitely got to be hard working, I think that's the main thing, the work ethic. They've got to be passionate. Um, I think experience is really key. I think when I started in the industry, um, I actually went to university, um, but throughout that I did work placements and I had to do that off my own back. Um, and I know the Fashion Retail Academy, you really like kind of really push that, don't you, with your kind of like programs that you offer. And I think that is so important. And I think that is what we would look yeah. for because it's one thing learning about the fashion industry mm -hmm. and it's one thing learning about I did my degree was in marketing business and fashion marketing it's one thing learning about that but until you've really like got into the role and had first-hand experience that's how you learn yeah yeah and if you can then get someone with that experience it's you that's know a new grad yeah and even yeah. if it's not in the role that you've looked for say you're you know studying buying and even if it's not in that sector but you know that you don't want to go into that but yeah. you've had experience in that you've had experience in merchandising yeah i think it's really key just to come with that experience that you've learned yeah so yeah definitely so potentially some frg definitely yeah definitely no yeah, yeah. 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 Um, thank you so much for joining us on the Fashion Dialogue. It's been an absolute pleasure to um, have you here with us. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. Us. Thanks very much. <laughs>